Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about hate speech and hate ideology, and I want to talk about how we can protect ourselves and our society from hate. This is something that unfortunately I don't think our culture is very good at, but it's something that you can learn to get better at. I want to explain a little bit about how hate speech and hate ideologies work. Like, hate is a way of thinking, and it has certain patterns of thinking in it. I tend to think of hate as going hand in hand with untruth, and on the other hand, you have love and truth that I think are more paired with each other. So you have this contrast of like, hate and love, and then untruth and truth. Hate ideologies tend to reinforce themselves by certain specific types of untruth and certain specific ways of thinking. And typically, they focus on specific groups of people, and they denigrate and dehumanize these people. So they might use language that, instead of referring to people as people, you might refer to them with certain slurs. So like, instead of saying black people, hate groups that are hateful towards black people are going to use any number of racial slurs directed at those people. And this is not a coincidence. This is fundamental to how hate operates. Like, you take away the idea of people being people so that you're not tapping into that human empathy. Another thing that hate ideologies tend to do is they tend to characterize people and their intentions and their qualities negatively. So they tend to use a lot of gross, negative overgeneralizations about people, and they tend to assume negative intent in people's actions. So these are some of the ways that hate ideologies operate. If we're going to overcome them, we need to be mindful of this. And in particular, I think it's really important to stop the propagation of hate ideologies. And one of the things that happens a lot of the time is that when people engage in hate speech, a lot of people who disagree with the speech and who don't like it, they may even be targeted by it, they still actually get roped into it. They get roped into this way of thinking, and it creates an us versus them. And in some cases, it can even escalate. Like, a common pattern that I see uh, playing out nowadays is that there will be some group that engages in hate speech, and it might be really, really extreme, and they, they go around the country, they publicize it, and so on, and eventually someone, somewhere, engages in violence against the people engaging in the hate speech. And then that, those people will use that as evidence that their opponents really are evil and unreasonable and blah blah blah. They're sort of using this to fuel their ideology. And this really bothers me. It's, it's like this process of escalation, which often culminates in violence. I want to stop this process, and I want to kind of shut down and disempower the people engaging in these hate ideologies so that these ideologies can, can die out. Now, how do we do that? I think in order to do this, we need to be aware of the ways in which we ourselves can get roped into these ideologies. Humans have this natural tendency to mirror or match other people's communication. So for example, like, I'm hanging out with my friends, I might mirror and match their body language, I might match some of their patterns of speaking, the, their tone of voice, I might start using some of the same words and patterns of speech that they're using, and so on. And this tendency normally helps me to connect more with people. I think we all have this kind of tendency, and it generally helps bring people together. But when it comes to hate speech, this same tendency can actually be a problem. Because if someone else is really deeply steeped in a way of thinking that is hateful and untruthful, and they're engaging in these patterns of speech that are hateful, if we match those patterns of speech, then we're going to get pulled into a hateful mindset ourselves. And this is exactly what I see happening in our society. I see it happening frequently these days. 
I want to give an example of homophobia, because that's something that I've had homophobia directed at me personally. Like, I get a lot of hate comments on my YouTube channel. You don't see them because I screen them. But I've gotten a number of homophobic slurs directed at me. And so, people might use these slurs towards me, they might use them towards other people, and so on. And one of the responses that I see people do is they respond to this, and they're like, oh, these awful bigots, these homophobes, and I'm like, there's a problem here. Like, when you react that way, you've matched and mirrored what they've done. They used a slur at you or at someone else that you care, someone who you care about, and you have now used your own slur back at them. Now you might say, okay, calling someone a homophobe or a bigot is truthful, and their slur isn't truthful. Well, I'm not here to argue about whether or not it's truthful. What I want to point out is that it is a negative label that is used to devalue another person. And so you've kind of gotten pulled into one aspect of a hate ideology by matching that pattern of communication. Another pattern of communication that I mentioned earlier is overgeneralization, negative generalizations, and reading negative intentions into people's behaviors and like attributing negative intentions to them. So like a good example that I see on the same topic of homophobia, like, I see this like really alarmist homophobic rhetoric. And that is stuff like, oh, like, gay people are infiltrating our schools and they're trying to push the homosexual agenda on us, blah blah blah, and like, it can get kind of paranoid and bizarre, but I've heard stuff like this. And it's interesting though, because in, like, liberal ideologies, I hear people reacting to homophobia in similar ways. So, for example, I hear stuff like, oh, like, these people, like, don't give a shit about gay people at all, and they're just, like, trying to keep us down and make our lives difficult. And I hear this sort of rhetoric in response to any sort of opposition of, uh, gay rights. And I want to point out how complex this is, and how that way of thinking is not strictly truthful. I know two people, both of whom oppose same-sex marriage in their church. And I was really surprised when one day I came in and they were having an argument with each other. And one of them was voicing some ideas which I know to be very untruthful. Ideas like being gay is a choice, and he was arguing, like, he, he was putting down gay people in some really dis disrespectful ways. And this other guy, who still does not support same-sex marriage in his church, he was arguing with this guy and he was saying, hey, there's scientific evidence that being gay is not a choice, and there's no evidence that it harms people to be in gay relationships. And I was like, whoa! I did not expect these things to come out of this guy's mouth. And I sat there and listened while he argued with this guy, who was his brother, about why he thought it was important to support same-sex marriage in society as a whole, even though he still personally opposed it in his church. And that was really fascinating, and I think it made me realize that a lot of these negative generalizations that I hear in liberal subcultures about more conservative people can have untruths in them. Like, just because someone opposes one aspect of gay rights doesn't mean they're not going to stand up for gay rights in another way. And how does this relate to hate, hate speech and hate ideology? Well, if you're getting subjected to hate speech, or if you see other people getting subjected to it, and you allow yourself to get pulled into that way of thinking, that sort of us versus them, that sort of demonization, and you start demonizing the people engaging in the hate speech, you might actually be thinking some untruths about them. People can and do leave hate ideologies and leave hate groups, like a famous hate group, Westboro Baptist Church. If you do research online, you will find that there are people 
who leave that, that community, who realize that it is hateful and untruthful and leave it. And so if you see people engaging in hate speech and you just say like, oh, these people are completely ridiculous, they don't care about anyone, they don't have any intelligence, whatever, like, that's wrong because people do go out of these ideologies. And if you're treating them in this negative way, you're going to be reinforcing that ideology. The way we break down these ideologies is not by fighting them, like, as an opponent. That, that whole way of thinking is at the heart of hate ideologies. The way we break them down is first by protecting ourselves. Like, we need to protect ourselves from getting roped into that. And then, when we have this stability and security that we are not getting pulled into the hate, even when we're subjected to it, that's how we will eventually draw other people out of it. And how can we do this? I want to just provide some really powerful and simple rules. I think one of the most powerful ones for me is to never ever use a negative label to refer to another person. So you notice in this video, I have called certain ideas homophobic and certain types of speech homophobic, but I'm never going to refer to a person as homophobic and not as a homophobe or a bigot or anything like that. So similarly with the word racist, I think ideas can be racist, actions can be racist, ways of thinking can be racist. I'm not going to call a person racist, even if that person is using awful racial slurs. I think that this, this guideline of not using negative labels to refer to people and to always referring to people as people, that is really, really powerful and transformative. If you want to go deeper into some rules or guidelines that are a little harder to implement but still powerful, I think that avoiding overgeneralizing is really powerful. Like, seeing people as complex is really powerful. Seeing all people as having good and bad qualities together. I think that can be really transformative and can help move people out of hate ideologies. So yeah, I hope that this has provided some sort of insight. I ultimately hope to push society in the direction of more awareness of these things because I think that we can break down hate ideologies, but we need to keep a monitor on that tendency in ourselves to mirror other people's uh, patterns of communication. and make sure that we don't ourselves get sucked into that. Yeah, thank you.